<laughs> Go again. Three, two, one, five. Welcome back. You are listening to the Movement for Life podcast. Where we talk about ways to keep us moving throughout our life. My name is JR. And I am Colby. Hi, Colby. Hello, JR. Shall we drink some water before we get this started? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by ASMR. Water drinking ASMR. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good. I feel great. Um, Same. I expected to maybe be in way worse sharp shape today. Um, sharp. Sharp. But I feel good and I feel really good. Um, I'd like to try to work out today at some point, which is yes. I'm excited for. Yeah. Yeah. We just finished week one of the Open and it wasn't um, – it, in the moment, it wasn't wonderful, but um, it was a pretty – I think the workout itself allowed you to recover pretty quickly, depending on, you know, like how your lower back is, how you were moving through those, those movements. But overall, I'm feeling good. I worked out Saturday and Sunday. So, and it's Monday. Nice. So we're good. Yeah, I did. I did. I was actually really sore. Worked out. I don't know why, but I worked out really hard on Monday, Tuesday, and then I got roped into a workout on Wednesday. Okay. And so I was really sore on Thursday and Friday. I felt like I recovered pretty well, did the open workout Friday night, I worked out Saturday, um, and I got some sunshine Nice uh, this weekend, which actually felt really good after all of the the rain and cloudiness to just sit in some sun for a couple of hours, which is great. Yes. But staying moving uh, basically throughout the weekend, which is great. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just going to keep doing what I did last week and hope this yeah. week two of the open is as nice to me as week one was. That would be good. Yeah. I, I um, I'm just realizing that I dropped, I didn't, because of this competition, I'm not, I didn't play pickleball last week and I didn't What's do jujitsu. Pickleball. What? Pickleball is yeah. going to the wayside. Well, I'm, you know, just being a little bit more cautious about getting hurt. And yeah. I'm like, if I, it'd be a bummer to get hurt playing pickleball or doing jujitsu. I was about to say, how would one get hurt playing pickleball? Oh man, there is some serious injuries in pickleball. I'll have to show you some of these. There's a guy who lost like his eyeball because of huh? the pickleball. Well, that's yeah. because he was probably doing something stupid. Well, there's also lots of stupid videos of people getting hurt playing pickleball too. But I see that. you can ask Victor, I break his ankles, you know? Okay. And you're on the same team? That's what happens? <laughs> no, not when I'm playing against him. Okay. Um, well, great. <laughs> what are we talking about this week? This week, we're going to talk about mindset. Mindset as you are trying to either get into working out or stay with your fitness regimen or mindset while you're actually working out, you know, like making sure that we're crossing that finish line we're finishing what we're doing and mm. we go in with a goal and we're able to accomplish it i like that nice yes. yeah that's that's a a great topic to talk about and there's lots of different variations of mindset that we can kind of yes. get into cool agreed um why don't why don't you start us off and and give us some more um background or things that you kind of think about when it comes to mindset during your exercise i know you do a ton of different stuff so do yes. you think about different things going into different types of exercise or what, what like let us into your head a little bit um, yeah if we're talking about while we're working out there's definitely going to be different mindsets that you're going to have to kind of dive into to accomplish what you're doing so if we are referring to crossfit a lot of the time is just trying to overcome the the mind telling you that this hurts too much or you can't breathe, mm. you know, like that intensity level, making sure that we can overcome that. Like, yes, we're going to be okay. We've trained for this. We can do it. Um, there's the mindset when we're doing gymnastics, 
that I have to be focused on one singular thing. And for mm. that, it's usually because of safety. So going into trusting the process that we've done the appropriate amount of reps and that my body knows what to do and just staying focused on that. And that can be tough when you're in a environment that's really loud or there's a lot of stuff going on. You have to really, you have to have that kind of tunnel vision. And then the other thing that I do often is running. So when I run, a lot of time it's just the mindset of me committing to the longer duration, you know, whether it's two or three hour run that can mm. play mind, mind games with folks. And, um, you know, for me, when I run, I like to just either run with podcasts or some kind of like really dramatic music. But overall, it's just about believing that what I'm doing is, is fun. You know, like if you go in the two or three hour run ahead of you and you're like, this is going to suck and you have a bad attitude, it's never going to be great. Yeah. Do you, um, do you have a, a difference in, um, like training mindset versus competition mindset? Um, cause it's, it sounded like some of the stuff, um, you know, when you're talking about CrossFit, you're like, you got to get ready for the intensity of the suck and gymnastics. You were like, you have to, um, think about that singular skill. Is there something different that you think about during training? That versus competition or are they kind no, of the same I, they in my opinion you should really be practicing the way that you want to compete mm. and if we're going to speak about gymnastics particularly it's it can be hard to simulate that environment in practice because it can be a laid-back environment but you have to train as if you're going to compete you know and i think a coach's job is to create a lot of noise or things that could um take hmm. your focus away and one thing that we would do in gymnastics is oh that's cool if i was going to do a floor routine the entire gym would either gather around the floor and just scream and yell and just try to create as much chaos so it really focuses me to to just be with myself and i think that's where i've learned to do a lot of my running or workouts without any music because i actually i don't care if i have music or not like i've been able to create an inner dialogue with myself especially mm. on a long run um i am not driven by or need to have some kind of certain music you'll have people in the gym say i need this kind of music or i need yeah. music who's going to pump me up but i feel like if you are really honed in mentally then that stuff is really unnecessary. It's it's nice to have it, I guess, but I don't hear music when I do a CrossFit workout. I don't hear what's going on. Like I'm so in involved in what I'm doing and talking to myself and trying to focus and either tell myself it's not really hurting that bad or I can do this, counting reps or whatever. I I don't need that external stimulus hmm. to drive me. And I feel like when I I'm trying to encourage members to take the focus away from whatever external and go within that I, I'm trying to help them be stronger mentally because there's going to be times when you're in a situation, whether it's a competition or you're in a different gym or music's not working. You know, we've all been there where, hey, the stereo's not working for a moment. We're, the first yeah. 10 minutes, we're not working with, out with music. We're trying to get our Bluetooth set back up. or whatever is happening and you know being able to to really focus on what you're doing versus needing other little things to get you through it is yeah it's part of having a really strong mindset that's that's actually super interesting and i never even i've never really thought about that and now i'm like curious to kind of see how i would do it sounds like you've had intentional distraction yes um, and that's helped you build a better mindset for when you're, you're working out. Um, and I'm like trying to think, has there ever been like times that I, some, or I put myself in a situation that's like been intentionally distracting in order to try to get better at blocking out the external. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I can recall something and I, I wonder if that would be like a fun or like if it would be super overwhelming for me to try to do something like that. That's interesting um, that you say that because I'm thinking in CrossFit and Olympic lifting, everyone's like, shh, 
let him go. Or they'll yeah. cheer him on, but there's not an a purposeful distraction created. Yeah. But if we're going to train for how an environment's going to be, where there's going to be a lot of people cheering or whatever, then that that probably be, should be something that you practice in your gym if you're going to be competitive because you're going to go to a competition and there's going to be a lot of external just stimulus noise going around you. And if yeah. you're not prepared because competing is different than practicing. And if you're not putting yourself in that position, we would call uh, our, our turns pressure sets in gymnastics. So, for example, like the girls when they're doing beam routines, like, okay, we're doing pressure sets. So everybody has – a routine to hit. If you don't hit this routine, this is the consequence. And we may be like doing two extra ones, or if everybody hits, nobody has to do a second routine or something oh, like wow. that. If you're doing something to where everybody knows that, hey, we're not blaming one person because it's meant to challenge you mentally. Yeah. You're putting yourself in a situation that I it's a do or die. Because yeah. when you go to competition, especially gymnastics, you get one turn and that's it. Yeah. You can make all your practice or your warm up turns, but if you don't do it when the time is there, then something's missing. And so uh, I, I have a lot of experience with that. Man, I kind of like that. I kind of want to start incorporating that into some of our CrossFit training. It was like inside of a class kind of bring in like, Hey, everybody gets an opportunity to try this lift. If you don't make the lift, then everybody's got to do something as a consequence of it. And so it's yeah. a little bit more pressure and, and like, you know exactly what you said it's it's not like no one's going to be blaming anybody else like right. the, the consequence is kind of there's not a serious consequence it's not like your mom is dying because you didn't well do you'll this. see people completely crumble under that pressure they can't handle it and as soon as they're put in that position then they fail and that's just something then you know like mentally they yeah need to work on that but it yeah, is, is, it's, yeah. it's tough though like to give a consequence we have to be mindful of the people who's who's participating, we don't want it to seem like punishment. And that's not what it's supposed to be. It's yeah. supposed to be like, hey, there has to be some kind of consequence because otherwise it's no pressure. So then, you know, for folks out there, it's a fine line. I'm not going to force everyone to do burpees or run because they don't make it. But maybe like we're doing this as uh, we would do one thing for the boys. We would do pressure sets on mushroom. Everybody gets one turn to do as many circles as you can. The team that has the most circles wins. That's a pressure set. You get one mm. turn and a lot of kids would get up there. They do their first circle. And though they could usually do 25 plus circles in a row, they do one and they fall off because they can't handle everybody. So that's, a, that's yeah. a, probably a more positive way to define that pressure set because mm. the consequence is you get the one term and no one's yeah. getting punished quote unquote yeah yeah i like that there you, you got to be very mindful about if you're gonna pressure test being intentional with with talking about hey the reason for this is growth and bu building some sort of like mental fortitude for this the reason for this is not to provide negative consequences for this or to, to like right. say that you're not good enough for this sort of thing um yeah so I can, I can, I see exactly where you're going there is like, yeah, that could, that could potentially be taken in a negative light if approached the wrong way. But you could do this in a CrossFit class. Hey, everybody get 10 minutes to warm up a clean at 10 minutes. Everybody goes one time and yeah. two yeah. teams. Like, you know, we have a gym where we have the rig separated in the middle team A's on one side, team B, and you go one to one, someone on team A goes, someone on team B goes. And at the end, you add the, the numbers up and. Whoever has yeah. team has the most weight, they win. That's the way you can do it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Ooh, some new meddling. challenge. All yes. Right. Um, so you, um, in talking about mindset, you had a different version of mindset that you wanted to discuss. Yeah, I kind of wanted to talk, to talk about like mindset when it comes to getting into health and wellness, and like what kind of what mindset is going to help you win in this. Um, overall game and some things came to mind when I talk about mindset for me, I'm not necessarily thinking about the actual event, but potentially like all the things that are leading up to the exercise. My mindset is significantly better when I'm already there and, and doing it. The hard part for me is the motivation, the, the getting there, the showing up again, the, all the other things. And so I kind of wanted to talk about uh, a finite game versus an infinite game. Um, and 
in my opinion, the best way to have the mindset you need to have is thinking about an infinite game that you are playing. Um, and first thing I'll do is kind of explain the difference between a finite game and an infinite game. But in a finite game, there's a clearly defined endpoint where there's winners and losers. In the infinite game, all parties are working to keep the game in play. So there are no winners and losers, but rather those that drop out of the game due to the lack of will or the lack of resources to continue. Uh, the primary objective is to keep playing. The best possible outcome in an infinite game is that you end your term, turn happy with your progress in it. Uh, so that's kind of something that I try to think about when I'm thinking about like, hey, are my training sessions going well? Are my goals that I'm making going well? Like the 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 mindset that I have to have is like there is no end point to these things, but rather like I'm trying to figure out how I can play another day, play another right. day, play another day, play another day. Um, and th this is go ahead. I was going to say uh, we can probably categorize a population of people within infinite and finite in those two groups, right? Like, couldn't we what put um, the infinite could be just everybody who's just working out and they're just they're going hmm. to do they're not like trying to be at one weight for one specific day, like an actual maybe competition where you're going in that day and that yep. it has a, that has a beginning and an end in like a, a period of time and yes. then it's over. But like yep. for the majority of us who either aren't competing or are trying to just be fit, it's, it's infinite because you're ever growing. There's always progress and there's never, unless you decide I don't want to ever work out again. <laughs> Am I, is uh, that correct? Yeah, you were you were like exactly spot on right there. Like you think about the the athlete's mindset, let's say in a CrossFit realm is like, "Hey, I need to win this competition or I got to do well at this competition." Um or like there's there's a there's defined rules for the competition and you're aware of them and the goal, the objective is to win the competition. Um and so it creates expectations and it creates um like parameters that you're you're making all of your other decisions by um now there's there's like arguments for like hey in, in what situations should um should i arrange the rest of my life around a finite game mm -hmm. um in my opinion, there are there are ways that you should definitely be arranging your life around the the, the finite game, and those are professional athletes. <laughs> yes, they're getting paid. Um, when you are getting paid to play finite games, like you you better be changing all of the other decisions in your life based on on you know the the finite game, the winning, the being the best at it, every decision that's being made for it. Um, and then there might even be a, a middle category of that or like for a, an aspiring professional athlete as well. And that's got to be somebody who definitely knows their direction. They know full well that this is something that they want to do. And they know the consequences, positive and negative consequences of taking this action towards the finite game. And then there's like a third category of people who are like, I do this um, for fun to be healthy, but I'm also competitive. And it's like, maybe you should be in the infinite game and not in the finite game and play, play mini series, right. Of finite mm -hmm. games, but think about, Hey, I'm, I'm in the infinite game for this, this piece of life. Um, and I think when we talk about the infinite game as well, there's, there's, so all of this is coming from a Simon Sinek book that he wrote. That's called lo and behold, the infinite game. Um, but there's five principles for the infinite mindset. And I, I really liked um, these, these five things as well because it, it puts you on that path to like look past like certain points and look at like the horizon. Um, and instead of thinking like, hey, I got to get here, I got to get here, I got to get here, it helps you like raise your eyes to a horizon. So he kind of talks about the five different principles and those five different principles are number one, to exist, to further adjust cause. 
to number two, build trust in teams. Number three, find worthy rivals or opponents. Number four, display ex existential flexibility to make extreme st strategic shifts. And number five, to find the courage to lead uh, with an infinite mindset. So kind of a lot going on in there. Um, but one of the things that I really like on there is the finding worthy rivals as something that you like, you don't want to play a game where you, you are just, you're, you're winning, you're dominating, you're, you're beating everyone every single time. The other side of that too, is like, nobody wants to play the game with you if you are crushing everybody else. Um, so I, I thought that was like a really fun um, thing to think about is like, Hey, you want to find some rivals. You want to find some things, some people that are like similar to your level to push you towards. And then the other thing was being able to make strategic ex existential flexibility to make extreme strategic shifts. That sounds like a bunch of, um, gobbly goo. Yeah. Like fancy wording. Um, in, in my head, when I hear something like that, you got to be able to change your strategy. Like if, if something isn't working, say it's okay to change it. Um, and I think, I think that that is sometimes overlooked when we think about mindset, we're like, Oh, and I have to do this. 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 Instead of like taking a step back and like thinking, Hey, should I be changing my direction? Should I be going mm -hmm. a different direction with this? Um, so I think having an, an infinite mindset allows you to have that flexibility to change the plan. Um, where if you're playing the infinite game, that might not changing the plan might not be an option. You're like, it's too late for me to change the plan. <laughs> right. Well, I would yeah. argue that there are some people who want to always be winning, winning, but I think that they would be opposed to seeking out either different gyms or populations of people that would challenge them because they uh, are afraid they wouldn't be good enough. Oh, so they're, oh. they're putting themselves in the position where like, I'm always the best, but then you, you know, offer them, okay, well, why don't you go to either this group or try a different gym where everyone's better than you or more people are better. Would they take that risk and say, I actually want to be better I'm going to take that jump, and that's an interesting, an interesting question because I can I, yeah. I know people who would just say, oh, no, I'm fine where I'm at because I'm the best here. Yeah, I, and I think that's an an amazing um, test and basically mindset, right? Like, hey, how strong is your mindset? If you're not willing, if you're not willing to go be challenged by something like maybe there's some work to be done in your mindset and you have yes. so much more potential for being able to do other things that you're not even, you're not even unlocking. Yes. Um, so I like that a lot. Um, what about like, we could, we could talk about a bunch of different like resources for getting a better mindset. And we've talked about different strategies or things that we do, um, you know, inside the gym or, um, principles for mindset. Um, but we want to be able to maybe give our listeners a little bit of info, um, right. or even, or even like a test, um, for some sort of mindset. Hey, can, can they go and do this, some sort of test on their own to kind of see where they're at? Are there resources that we can give them as well? Um, for that sort of thing. Okay. So I found on positivepsychology.com, there is a test that we're going to take, but I'm going to describe um, what it's testing. They have a two different categories they're placing people in. Either you have a growth mindset, and that is individuals who believe their talents can be developed either through hard work, good strategies, and or input from others, mm. or they have a fixed mindset. And that means that they were born with an innate ability to do something and that's all they got. Mm. All right. So okay. you can kind of just already by hearing those definitions, kind of understand, you know, we're trying to either find the people who are willing to try new things and believe that they can learn something new or 
people who maybe aren't willing to um, go away from what they either have always done or feel like is something that they would not be able to learn. And I feel like that fix could be, you know, whether you, maybe you're an older person and you've always done cardio and then you're 50 years old and someone says, why don't you try something like CrossFit or we do or strength strength training or strength yeah. training. And then they have to either reconcile if something they can learn regardless of the age or it's something that it's not something they've ever tried. So they don't believe they mm. would be good at it. Interesting. So we're going to put you through a little test here. Great. Well, I hope some people will call me out in comments if I give answers that don't align with what I actually do or believe. Okay. Kira, that one was for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Colby, I'm going to give you a mindset assessment. The definition here says our mindset exists on a continuum from fixed to growth. And although we'd like to always have a growth mindset, the reality is that we can only be on a journey to a growth mindset. The, grow, mm. the goal is to recognize fixed mindset elements in ourselves and then reflect on feedback and strategies for how to improve. So mm. this quest, so this quiz has some questions that I'll ask you. And then at the end, I'm going to get a result from you. Okay, great. Is this multiple choice? This is multiple choice. Great. So you're going to either disagree a lot, you'll disagree, you'll disagree a little, agree a little, agree, and agree a lot. So it's a little subjective. So okay. Um, Great. Question number one. No can matter we put this for all of the all our listeners too, so they can go do I'll, it. Yeah. So I'm awesome. going to create a link for this quiz if you guys want to do it later on on your own. Question one. No matter how intelligent you have. Question one, no matter how much intelligence you have, you can always change it a good deal. Um, agree. You can learn new things, but you cannot really change your basic level of intelligence. Um, read that one again. You can learn new things, but you cannot really change your basic level of intelligence. Disagree. So your, disagree. Okay. Yeah. I like my work best when it makes me think hard. Strongly agree. I agree a lot. Okay. I like my work best when I can do it really well without too much trouble. Mm, agree. Agree a little. Agree a little. Number five, I like work that I'll learn from even if I make a lot of mistakes. Agree. I like my work best when I can do it perfectly without any mistakes. Disagree. Strongly. I make a lot of mistakes. Yes, you do. All right. When something <laughs> is hard, it just makes me want to work more on it, not less. It depends on my mood. Um, more times than not, if something is hard, I don't. I'll. I want to work on it less. Doesn't mean I work on it less, but I want to work on it less. Okay. So agree a little. Yeah. Number eight, to tell the truth, when I work hard, it makes me feel as though I'm not very smart. Disagree strongly. All right. We're going to submit his answers and get a feedback. All right. I have the results from Colby's mindset quiz. His results say that he understands that his intelligence is something that you can increase. You care about learning and you're willing to work hard. You do want to do well, but you think it's more important to learn than it is to always score well. This is what we call the growth mindset. Even though you have a good foundation, there are some areas where you could benefit from learning how to cultivate your growth mindset practices. For example, you may seek challenges and perform at a high level, but sometimes feel uncomfortable with criticism, even if well-intended. How very interesting. We're going to come back to that one. Or <laughs> be uh, rather hard on yourself when you do make mistakes. 
You may have more potential than you're using. People who believe that they can increase their intelligence through effort and challenge actually get smarter and do better in school, work, and life over time. They know that mental exercises make their brains grow smarter the same way that exercises makes an athlete stronger and faster. They are always learning new ways to work smart and build their brains. A growth mindset is something that you can continue to develop throughout life. So I think that's that's a pretty accurate description, don't you think, of yourself? Yeah, I think that was pretty fair. Awesome. Anything yeah. um, stick out to you about what it says? I mean, obviously, I think something stuck out to you. <laughs> <laughs> It's always, it's hard to hear that, you know, uh, it's hard to be good at getting, giving, getting criticism. Um, yeah. But I think understanding that it's part of growing and learning. Um, and it's also hard to like make big mistakes too. And that, but the hard part is it's got to understand that it's part of learning. But it's those are not things that I particularly enjoy is criticism or or um, making mistakes, even though I understand that they are part of the process. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I'm curious to at some point see what your results are. I will I will do this one later on and send you the results. Um, I'm also interested because I feel like a lot of the things that you I feel like we have a lot of similar beliefs and we do things very similar. That's why I kind of understand when you do certain things like, Oh, I've done that before mm. and I've, I've worked on that. And, um, so I'm kind of, I'm really worried what Mike's going to say, because oh. I was, <laughs> there's a couple of the questions that I would have said completely different. Mm. Like I really like doing things that I'm not good at and I will do it over and over again because it becomes a challenge for me when I can't do something well, I'm going to keep doing it. And fail and fail and fail. And then when I can do it, I'm like, look at what I can now do. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not easily swayed away from something from failure. So, uh, mm. but yeah, that's good. Okay. But I'm, I will include this in the show notes. So, folks, you'll take this test. It's free. It will ask you to put in your email address, but it will send you the results and, you know, find out if you have a growth mindset. Great. I want to finish by giving a couple more. Uh, maybe cheap slash free resources for people to um, go and take a look at as well. Um, we've got some friends, Dusty and Cecily, that are, they run a company called Skull and Bone Society where they can help people live with the end in mind. Um, I think it's Memoti, Memoti, Memorum or something like that, which means live with the end in mind. And I think a lot of that has to do with mindset and, and figuring out like, hey, who are you? Who do you want to be? And where do you want to go? Um, I think that knowing those things really helps with developing some sort of mindset. Um, so we're going to put some of their um, free slash online courses in the description today as well. Yes. Um, one of them is the Anchor course, How to Lead a Values-Based Life. Um, that is 25 bucks. Um, and we'll leave a link for it. The other one is the personal narrative project. Um, and it's also an ebook that it's 20 bucks. Um, and that's a 23 page little booklet, um, that you use to journal and reflect and kind of, um, create a, a journaling experience or exercise. Um, that'll kind of help you look at some key experiences of things in your past and your life and kind of help you look hmm. towards the future. That's cool. Yeah. And they've got a ton of other stuff as well, but I thought those are a couple of little mindset um, pieces that were free slash cheap that that could be super useful for some people. Yeah. Thank you for including that. Yeah. Are you giving me a thumbs up? No, you're yes. giving me a finger. Both. Um, that's great. I think that was a, a very, very helpful episode, humbling episode for sure. Hearing yeah. some I, things. I think that the overall goal should be for everybody to realize that there's there's so much more potential in all of us. You just have to have the right mindset to either approach or attack whatever it is you want. But we have so much 
so much potential in ourselves. So go out there and do what you want to do. Yeah. I, I think the last thing I'll put out too is like even even people who look like they have it all together and they look like they're hard things are not hard for them and they have the best mindset, like it it might not be easy for them to make those decisions. It might be other things that they're struggling with as well. And maybe you just don't, you don't see them. So yeah, they may make it look, their talent may be that they make that kind of stuff look way easier than it actually is, you know? Yeah. So I think somebody who says, oh, I could never be that person or I could never do this or I could never do that kind of buys into that thought of like, you know, somebody else, it's way easier for somebody else than it is for me. So yeah. We will be back with a second additional podcast tonight. Tonight. Where we are going to review the second workout of the CrossFit Open 24.2. We have a special guest coming on. And I think that the special, epi the special episodes are great. You guys love yeah. all, the, the, all, the, all the extra stuff we're giving you. Yeah, I got awesome, awesome feedback from everybody last week who said yep. that they loved the, watching the extra episode, um, having some strategy, even just having like a little bit different cadence on the on the podcast than what we normally talk about. Um, yeah, and like learning from some new people. So awesome! We've got Jeremy Cousins from CrossFit Thousand Oaks coming on this week. We're excited Hello. to kind of talk to him about some of the things that he does, some predictions for the open, um, some strategy from him, and then um, you know some some information about CrossFit TO. All right. We'll see you tonight. See you later. Bye, everybody. Emmanuel, that was so good. <laughs> Go again. Three, two, one. Ah.